All right, put the recording back on. Good, that's running. Okay. <clears throat> of course, I think I'm up against uh, Roberto, you know, who does an excellent session. So we'll see how many people want to come. And as soon as this thing clicks over to double zero, we will start, whether there's people or not. Not everyone's interested at the same time, so. Well, well. Well, right now it only shows the three of us in here. Two of us. Hey, who's up here right now? You and me. Oh, no, we have uh, Mick well, Mahler. We throw up Mahler's there, so. Yeah, one one person at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I see. So if I open the Q&A button, then I'll see Q&A. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, two people now, so. <laughs> it's growing. Yes, I know. <laughs> see you later. All right. Thanks, Richard. And in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, almost. Click, click, click. There we go. All right. Welcome to home to work to home to collapse here back and forth and everywhere in between. For the last six or nine months, you've probably been spending all that time trying to figure out where you're going to work and what you're going to do, how well can you do it, how you try to avoid it, how to do it better. And this session is somewhat about what you get to do from a technical perspective and from a um, general perspective of how you work and how, how your day works, both from an administrator view and from a user view, from a manager view. And so let's begin. So before everybody uh, should know that we have sponsors, the sponsors have been very generous to us and are allowing this session to be free for everybody to attend. Please spend the time to go see what they're all doing, what they're offering. I've worked with most of the people on that list and I can say that they're excellent people to work with and always um, way ahead of everyone else when it comes to what's happening. So for those who don't know me, my name is Keith Brooks. I'm the CEO of B2B Whisper. We work with the customers both in the collaboration space, as well as people looking to handle their uh, CI, their competitive intelligence in their marketing. Which is something, for those who know me, I come from a big group of that. And I started with Lotus back in 93. I've been in the Windows admin for many years. I ran in some of the certs that you may have taken over the years from eight and nine. I've also written some of my own ed books and co-author of the Quicker Admin book. You may recognize some of the ACL ambassador tips I've been writing one a day all year. I'm going to get 366 done by the end of the year. And on the top right, you'll see two pictures of me, one as I am now. And one as I was at my first MW log, which is what Collapse Ray used to be called. That was eight years ago. I've been done a couple, but that was the first photo I can find. So we've got questions. How do you get more out of this stack of software that we picked up from HCL and from IBM and Lotus and we inherited? There are even other things that aren't even related to all that, right? How do we get further? just because we're home compared to let's say when we're at the office, right? What if you could be doing more with what you already have? What if the stack we've got could be more efficient and could be working better? And that's really what this session was about. Because uh, obviously by now, most people have figured out how to work at home. You know, they've got their chair, they've got their desk, they've figured out what to do with their kids and everything. But Sometimes the, the basic things are lost because you don't have the IT guys around the office anymore. You don't have people pushing things out to you all the time because now you're home, it takes longer. So this is about trying to kind of help everybody get a little faster in their processing. But first, I want to talk about the hierarchy of collaboration. All right, most of us have started with, with Domino at the base level. And for those who are not part of that stack, You've got connections on the other end. So depending on where you are in the collaboration world, this, this is how your view works. So from Domino, you've got notes, you've got uh, webmail, iNotes, you've got HCL versa travel or above that. You've got same time linking everybody up together and doing some of the interactions that don't always require an email or a call. Right? And then connections is where we, we can get our 
data stored. And we can also you know, share among the communities and we can keep people updated with what's going on. And on the sides where, where I've done, I've got workflows up one side, which includes uh, Domino apps, Vault, which is the low code, low code option for developers to help write, uh, shall we say, faster things that people need, right? Whatever it is, but not maybe a whole full app because, you know, sometimes you just need something today or next week and you just want to get it done. And then you've got Nomad, which takes your existing notes apps and turns those into browser apps without really any code from your side, which is great because now everybody's home. And sometimes people don't really want to rely on the notes client because maybe they've got a different machine, they have different bandwidth. Sometimes you want that browser flexibility, be it from a device or your phone. And so that's where Nomad comes in. On the flip side, on the right side, we've got mail. And I've got the CYA stack. And I call it that because for many years, people have been saying, well, you know, you can use IN, you can do status updates. And, and that kind of is true. But at the same time, what happens is those don't really get tracked and stored in some cases. In some cases, they'll actually have an have a expiration date, 30 days, 90 days, whatever it is. And then they're gone. Re-mail stays. There's compliance, there's journaling, there's a lot of ways that that email stays and never goes away. And you can call it CYA, I call it um, accountability, reliability, dependency. Um, but basically this is the stack that we've got to work with. And all of that is why we, we keep using what we have and why we like it. Um, for those people who have, oops, missed the thing. For those people who this is, you know, not your first time at home, you're probably thinking, well, you know, lots of other products do these too. Right? We've got notes, we've got Outlook, we've got Teams, at the same time you've got all these things, you've got Zoom for the meeting at the same time we're meeting. What's really going to be helpful? And what are people really going to gain out of it? And I thought about that for myself for this session. I said, well, it's a good question, which not really has a simple answer, right? Why should we be any different than the Microsoft side or if you want the Google side or you know one of the countless millions of SaaS apps that are out there. And we don't have an answer. But for those who want to understand the O365 side and the Microsoft view, come tomorrow at this time, I'm doing a session with Hogman Peterson on the life and death of an O365 admin and user, where we talk about what is good, what's bad, what's crazy, and, and kind of what happens when you when you think that you know what you're doing and, and going to some other solution. But for today, we're talking about the ACL stack. So the first thing that happens when you decide to go home, or when your office said you should work from home, is somebody called IT and said, can we even let them work at home? And of course, IT said, sure, we can let people work at home. And, and someone else said, well, are they secure? And they said, sure, well, they're secure. Now, depending on the size of your business, your company, that sure they're secure falls into a gray area. So as most bigger companies, of course, have this infrastructure and firewalls and security and, and possibly like, you know, some kind of like extra VPNs and, and other multi-factor authentications. Some of the smaller businesses or the, or the you know, um, old timer businesses like manufacturing and some other things that are maybe in not so common areas, they're kind of looking at where they're like, we have, we have a firewall, yeah. And we had a VPN for like 10 people, not 100. What do we do? How do we do it? How do we move people through? And by now, most people have come through with that to help themselves get further in the world. But on the dominant side, unbeknownst to some people, we actually have a VPN in a way because we have what's called a dominant pass-through server. And if you think about it, what happens is the pass-through server kind of sits over here, right? And it's in the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. And all it's doing is waiting for your client to call. Your notes client on 1352 comes to it and says, hi, let me in so I can go back and talk to people. On the other side, right, this is the server. The server's over here. The server's now out here. So the server says, oh, I'm talking to the server. This server's talking to the client. Right, and the beauty of it is, aside from uh, the hardware, the VM of setting up this one password server, is it's basically free. Based, any dominant server can do this. Even your traveler server could be a password server, although it's highly not recommended. But 
the idea is you have a VPN that's already there. Domino once again giving you something for free that people basically pay thousands for. Right? Now, to be fair, this is only for Nats clients, right? Because it's a Domino server. So it's not like this will get you access into your entire network and file servers, but at least from a Nets client, which has apps and mail and other things in it, you've got free reign to go back and forth without a problem. And some of you probably have been using this already. I mean, maybe not as much. At the next level, you've got clients who have uh, iPads, you have phones, you have other devices. And the HCL safe links, which used to be IBM and slash Lotus Mobile Connect, gives you a VPN for those devices. So they can come in and you can control them, you can manage them, right? So you, oh, so you think about it, you have like two pieces of the puzzle. Uh, safe links, of course, is not free. You have to have to pay for it, but it's still much cheaper than some of the bigger uh, offerings at the VPN level or the mobile device manager level in the end. And you can get this and use it, and it works really well. And again, all it does is act as a gateway in, in the DMZ to get the client to the server, and everybody's happy. And of course, by now we hope, although as I saw the other day, someone sent me a message saying they need an SSL cert, you should have SSL on all your outside servers. If your servers are outside your domain and you're letting people in, they should all have SSL by default. Right? Most people already have an SSL server for their traveler server. Uh, it actually will become required, uh, I don't know the actual day, but let's say Q1 for the moment of 2021. So if you don't have one yet, you need to go get one and you're gonna need it um, relatively soon. If you need help with it, by all means, you can get in contact with me or any of the other ACL ambassadors or uh, ACL itself or any of the business partners. We're all happy to help you. While we're home, and I was talking about this earlier, we don't always have the luxury uh, of the network we had at the office. Right? At the office, most of us had probably gigabit, if not 10 gigabit um, backbones. When we're home, not all of us even have that. Right? For instance, this session right now, and I apologize if during the session it drops for 10 seconds or 15 seconds, I only have about 70 or so megabyte download and about three megabyte upload. Not a lot. Right. Now, my friend Christoph in Germany, he's got a fiber link, so he's got a gigabit download. I forgot how high his upload is, but it's crazy. So he's got almost like office type level. I've got almost like, you know, 20 years ago modem level as an equivalent. And how do we make all these systems work together? How do we make sure that we're able to do the same work with the same efficiency from home as we would have done if we were at the office, right? And so that's where this comes in. So you start with simple things like on the server end, the back end, your admin should have changed the on disk structure, uh, assuming you're on release 10. If you're still on eight or nine, there were still ODS changes, but not as good as what's in R10. And you run this on the server side. It makes the databases faster, smoother, cleaner, uh, more efficient, right? And it also increases the maximum size of that database which for the average person probably doesn't matter, but for those of you who've been pushing your quota, this will actually get rid of, well, it won't get rid of it because your company probably still puts you on a quota, but you basically can, can make extremely large databases. But again, if this hasn't been installed on the server side, there's no benefit to your mail file, and your admins have to figure out a way to put it on your client side, because the client side also has the ODS structure for the databases, right? And the best way, well, there's two, a couple of things they can do. They can run a policy to push out, maybe create R9, or actually R10 databases in the notes I and I, or they can send like a Lotus script item to you that'll basically run a process in the background and, and update everything. But it's really important to do that because it will make your life faster and more efficient with everything you do. You should also make sure your notes clients get upgraded. This one gets a little harder when you're home, as I saw with some people, because the download of, let's say, for the sake of argument, you know, anywhere from half a gig to a gigabyte, depending on how far behind you are, so to speak, it could take a little while. And then you get it downloaded, then you have to update it. And it's not always for everybody to do on their own. Right? So our friends at Panagenda have included the Marvel client in uh, version 10 and 11. 
And so if you're on those, you can, you can leverage that, which is free built into the server and, and have that handle the process of updating everybody's clients to the latest possible. And it's highly, uh, I shouldn't say that. I think it, it goes to a specific version. I don't recall if actually they are allowed to go beyond those versions. You may have to do some manual work or talk to them about licensing. Uh, or you can use node smart upgrade where basically there's a big blob of a file that gets shoved down to the person's laptop installs everything and up and running and go. It's great, right? But you need the updates. You need the updates for security because basically when you're in the office, it didn't matter. Now you're at home and you probably don't have that same security. You want those updates. You want to know you've got the proper security. Reduce the troubleshooting headaches that the help desk gets from people who have problems, right? And also pick up on various um, enhancements and, and fixes that have been put into the product over time, right? It's the same thing with your phone. Your travel on your phone should always be updated. Generally, they do update on their own. And for the same reason, because there's always things changing, always things being, being done, new certification. And without that, you're kind of stuck sometimes because you'll, you'll create problems. And right now, your help desk is way overloaded with people who can't connect, get remote issues, get VPN issues, get this issue. And so the, the less headaches we can give to the help desk, the better off we are. For your other software, like let's say Zoom, like we're using now, right? Um, Zoom has an option to do automatic updates. For some reason on my machine, it does not. So I have to go in manually and check for updates every couple of days because actually they do put out a new version every few days. And if you've had problems like I had in the past where my machine would kind of chug and act like it was like slow or lose resources, it would then kick back in as soon as I did updates on Zoom. So they're, they're slowly learning and adjusting how they handle their video, how they handle audio for everybody in the systems that they're putting out. So please, always do your updates. Let Windows do your updates. Like um, Get updates for whatever software you're using. And in some cases, even your laptops. You know, when you're in the office and you have company machines, usually there's stuff put out saying, please install this or get that or whatever. Sometimes at home, we need to do it on our own. There are lots of free apps that will check your machine and let you know if there's updates. The most common updates we all need are, are anything related to uh, network or Wi-Fi, video. Video has a lot of issues sometimes with people. And these little, all these little things incrementally create better benefit to you, better efficiency for your system and processes, and you make your life and eventually the help desk life better too. Um, so sorry, I should, probably should have said earlier, if anybody's got questions or anything to uh, raise, please just post them. As I get towards the end, I will be uh, opening that and answering them. It's a little hard to do it while I'm presenting. Uh, so, what was I? Right, so replication. You want to play nice with people. Before, when we were at the office, we had big bandwidth. We had tons of things. No one cared. You worked off the server. It was great, right? Now you're at home. Working off the server is not so good, right? Uh, you want to work off your local replica, which you should have. Your admin should have enabled it. You should also know how that works. And you know from the left-hand corner of your Nets client, it'll say your name. And below, it'll either say local or it'll say a server name. And if it says uh, server name, then you've got, um, you're using the mail phone on the server. And if it says local, then you're using the one on your machine. If you use the local one, it will always work very quickly and very efficiently. If you're using the one on the server, it's gonna have a problem every time you try and send, let's say, an email with an attachment. You're gonna to have to wait for that whole message to get created, sent up to the server, back to you, back to the server, back to doing the whole process. Nobody wants to waste their time with that. So what, what, we, what we suggest is to get away from having that and want to use the, just the local replica. Now, with that replica, there are a couple of options on replication. First one is checking replication settings. You don't need to slam the server. A lot of people have it set to replicate every few minutes. First of all, your admin, if you're any good, should have already prevented that from happening by putting in the uh, no I setting so that it only lets people touch, let's say, every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, right? But if not, Right, you on your side, on the notes client side, you go into the replication settings, you change it from every few minutes to about 15 minutes is fine. 
right? Why? Because these days we don't sit in our mailbox. We have other things we need to do. You know, maybe we're working on a spreadsheet or we're working on a new document or a new marketing or a new uh, battle card. You're not necessarily wanting to be bothered by your mailbox. And also you want to be fair to everyone else. If you're, if everyone's slamming it from the outside, the firewall gets blocked up, the VPN gets blocked up, and you end up waiting even longer, and then you start, you know, getting frustrated. If you do this, it'll alleviate a lot of that frustration and bottleneck that's for you and everyone else. Also, some people have the high priority replication still turned on. This is kind of also a relic from the old days when we had modems and we had a choice of how fast or slow we should replicate what we needed. And so a lot of times mail would be a high replication, but let's say the address book wasn't. These days we don't really need it. I suggest turning off high priority and not really worrying about that because your Google and all the applications will come in as they need it. And every uh, application will take their time. And which is another thing, when you're at home, applications take longer to send to you because you gotta go find them, connect to the server, get the thing, you gotta go check, go find out what's needed, back and forth. Before you know it, it's probably taking a minute or two per database. If you're hammering, if you're hammering the server every few minutes, you're never really getting your mail because you're constantly like bumping into yourself. And that's also highly inefficient and really don't recommend it. What do we recommend? Well, TCP IP efficiency. The screenshot on the right is from the Tesla ludicrous speed. And if you read the screen, it says, oh, are you sure you want to push the limits? And then, no, I want my mommy or, yeah, bring it on. This is kind of what we're talking about when we talk about efficiency and speed. Because, no, I'm not going to say you're going to be able to download a 100 megabyte file in a second. That's not what I mean. Uh, I'm not an ISP. But controlling your TCP IP settings is very important. You can say, why do I need to control my TCP IP settings? You know, I'm just a normal user or whatever, right? So your admins on the back end have, have kind of set up the servers in a, in a way that, that's most efficient for the server and the company. But you on the front end, at the client level, now have choices to make. Right? Most people want compression and encryption, obviously, and that's why I've got four options. We have none, both, or one of each. And you can say, well, why would I not want any of it, right? And so one of the answers is if you're in a, a Citrix or a Windows a VDI, you know, a virtual desktop interface thing, then you don't really need any of this, any of the client side things to do the work for you because everything is on the back end. The Citrix, the, the virtual system, the service, everything is in the office there. All you're getting is a representation from that machine of what you see on screen. And so compression and encryption, which have to do with the connections between the server and the client, don't really matter to you at that point because you're already in the office, it's already there, right? I mean, most people, of course, probably want encryption just in general, but for the most part, you may choose to not choose to use any of it. On the flip side, at the client for your machine, your desktop, laptop, you probably want both because now you need encryption because you're not at the office. And the compression will actually help because any of the big attachments with big graphics or something that can be crunched down a bit, you know, shrunk or whatever, will, will allow that to be compressed, providing the admin set it up on your server. Already done that anyway. And that's what makes it nice to move forward with and have available for everybody, depending on um, what your environment is. And if anybody's really interested in understanding TCIP IP settings, on the bottom there is a link to a blog post I wrote in 2014, God, I'm old. Uh, that actually gives a lot of details to what those numbers mean, how we get them, where we put them, what we do with them, all right? So let's talk about more stuff on the client side, right? One of the, I did a session, uh, I think it was uh, about a year and a half ago in the Nordics for the Nordics uh, user group where I talked about things to change in the Nudes client to make it more efficient. And I got a lot of feedback from people who appreciated hearing about it because they hadn't given them thought. Because so many things are relics of the ancient times of modems that they, they're not always sure what they can and can't mess with. Right? And that's where people like me and, and the other ATL ambassadors come from. 
if we mess with stuff, we don't care. We'll try anything because we're always trying to get better at what we know and what we do that will eventually help you as the user or you as the admin or you as a developer. I'm not a developer, so I don't have a lot to offer developers, but I'm sure other people do. Uh, so where, right, so client side, so next notes ports. If you go into your file and preferences and notes, right, you'll see one of the options is for notes ports. If you look at notes ports, you can say, well, why, don't, why do we have notes ports? Well, because years ago, we used to have comms for modems. We had NetBIOS because there actually was a network that relied on it, especially the OS2 ones. We also had SPX if you were from NetWare and a few other things along the way. I did once in an X4, an X25 line, whatever, a whole bunch of stuff. You only need TCP IP now, right? So if you have other ports there, just delete them. You only need TCP IP. And the reason is because when the client starts, it naturally says, oh, you have ports. I have to go check for the ports, even if that port doesn't exist or work. So you're wasting startup time every time by just having extra ports. On the server side, your admin should know, they should also check the ports because like recently in an audit we did of a customer, we found you know, a TCP IP port, which is the main, a TCP IP port for a cluster, but the cluster name was incorrect. It was going to, to one that didn't exist anymore. And we also found a third entry that had nothing to do with anything, but it was there. Maybe it was a relic, who knows? Maybe it was an admin at some point who didn't know what they were doing. So always clean up your ports, clean up your config docs, clean up your connection documents, right? Even in your notes client, in your contacts list, your personal um, address book, there, if you go into advanced, you'll then go see your connections. Usually there's a, a home notes net and there's, um, depending on your, how your company has set up the policies, you may have your home server there, maybe something else, right? If you have servers that don't exist anymore, pull them out. There's no reason for you to keep trying to call these servers that don't exist and check for them. Just wasting your time and, and making you less efficient. There's also replication settings. Going back to that modem days, you used to have the, well, we still have the option to replicate specific items, like maybe just design, maybe just the data. Maybe you want from only certain people or places or certain servers. Maybe you want only the last week, maybe you want certain sources. There are options there. And while that may not matter to you on the day-to-day -day basis, for some people who are pulling in a lot of data, they may actually say, you know what? I don't need all this. It's taking too long. Let me cut some of this back down and I'll get it when I want, right? And you can kind of trade this off and say, well, at a high priority, if we go back to the high priority idea, we can take a database at a low priority and say, just give me, you know, today's meal or whatever. And then at the high one, maybe once a week or something, you can change it and say, oh, give me everything, right? Like multiple replication options. But you want to kind of balance what's happening and be the most efficient that you can so that everybody has a way to work with everything that's out there and be happy with. And on the uh, location document, right? The dominant directory server, uh, let's see, it's location document, second tab is servers. First one is home server, obviously it has to know how to find you. But on the fourth or fifth, depending on how you're set up, is the home, the dominant directory server. And it should match your home server. That way the client doesn't have to guess where to go to get information. And you can say, well, if I just have a home server, doesn't it know how to do that? The answer is not really, because all it does the home server says, that's where my mail file is, go look at my mail. It doesn't really tell it what to do with everything else. And by defining the dominant directory server, you're telling it, go to my server, the one server that you know how to get to all the time, and it's the most efficient routing to get the information from that uh, address book. So that's a lot of client stuff, right? And uh, one of the things which um, didn't make it into my slides for some reason, although I did write it, write a slide, maybe this is a different version, was manage replicas. Manage replicas are your admin sets a policy that automatically creates the local mail file for you. You don't have to do anything, right? And it pushes out this change and then starts replicating your mail. And eventually you have a full local mail file on your laptop and um, the original is still on your server. And this is also a really great thing because it takes the headache that users have of trying to make a replica copy, not mess up the one they have, not delete it, not create a new copy, and, and all these things that eventually cause stress and problems for them. 
So we've taken away that headache by creating the management replica. So that was like a lot of the bits of the nuke client stuff. Now let's talk about some other aspects of our environment that we don't always think about that we could help everybody who's at home for change. So R and R. Most people think of it as rest and rehabilitation, right? But what it really is in the dominant world is rooms and resources, right? Again, I did a session about hacking the rooms and resources database in uh, Nordics last year, and I came up with a bunch of things that my clients have asked whether we added into the rooms and resources. But I'm not going to get into that for the moment. What I do want to get into is asking, have you created resources just for fun, right? Because normally you have your office, you know, you go over to this place or that room and you book it and whatever. But now no one has an office, no one has a room. So have you created a way for your teams, your people, your staff to create virtual rooms for themselves? It's pretty easy in notes to set up and it's very easy in the rooms and resources to set up. So there's no reason not to, right? And you can give it some funny names. You can give it really cool names, you know, do whatever you want. You know, a customer who names their rooms after dinosaurs, a customer who names their rooms after fruits, I have a customer who names their rooms after Greek gods, you know. Uh, somebody I knew did it after Star Trek uh, ships or Star Wars ships, whatever it was. So have some fun, think it up, give it to people. Sometimes you want a place just for you and the boss to hang out in, for the boss to sit and wait for people to come see them, right? Make up the ability to make it easy for people, to encourage them to do the things that they can do, right? Rather than trying to give them things that will not always work with them. Make it simple for everybody, especially management who doesn't always understand how to use everything in the most efficient way. And of course, if you're the manager, you do have time to talk to your team. Right? And I'm not saying you should do it every day, but you know, you should at least try and talk to them once in a while. It doesn't have to be for a long amount of time, but you should be trying to be interactive with people and understand what they're going through, when, when they have it, what they do, how they do it, to make your life and their life a little better. Also, don't make them do things they don't want to do. No one wants live feeds all day. No one wants to have you know, their camera on all the time. No one wants their audio on all the time. You know, like at the same time, you can shut down, um, you can make yourself invisible mode, right? No one knows you're even around. You can also make yourself busy. People ping you, you can ignore them or you can answer them. Okay? Don't don't create laws and habits that people aren't going to like and want to be a part of. Because now they're at home. You can't go yell at them because they can just ignore you. Okay? So try to be more reasonable to people and how they're working and work with them rather than against them. And if you don't know what to do, ask them. I'm sure they're happy to tell you what to do. So... Let's talk about the real thing that bothers everybody, right? Our devices, our laptops, the things that keep blinking and pinging and bopping and blooping and blip and blipping and all that stuff, right? Shut that stuff down temporarily. I'm not saying you should shut it off all day because then you may not get real work on it or know what you got to do. But you need to plan. You need to have time. You need to save your efforts. So first, notes, preferences, mail notification, mail and notifications. Turn off the sound. Let's say turn off the mail sound. This isn't 1995 anymore. But uh, there's also the pop up. Maybe turn off the pop ups if you don't want it. You can also there tell it how often to check for mail. Right? Probably didn't even think about that. Right? And you can do all that. And then notes will stop bothering you. It will stop trying to check as often. It will stop having the pop ups and just leave you alone to do what you got to do and be happy. Similar with same time. You can turn off pop-ups, the preferences, notifications. You can make yourself invisible, like I said. You can also make yourself busy. Same, you can, and um, many people seem to forget that same time interacts with your notes calendar. If you do, of course, you have to check the box and turn it on. But if you do that, then every time you have a meeting, same time says, hi, I'm in a meeting, leave me alone, or whatever message you want to say, right? So make use of these things. If you haven't done these things and you don't know how to learn, ask your IT guys, ask me. You can search online. We've all written about it, um, you know, on our blogs or whatever. Same time is great, but at the same time, sometimes you just want to kind of like, you need to work with me alone kind of thing. The problem for most of you is you don't want to shut it off because that means shutting off your mail too. So it's better to just kind of say, no, I don't want to hear from it. Put it in, in uh, quiet mode. Don't bother me. Don't play silence. Just kind of sit in the background and leave me alone. 
and that's fine, and that's okay, really. You know, the boss doesn't need to hear from you, doesn't need your answer this second, they can wait. Yeah, and you can tell them that, that'll be real fun. Get a message. So-and-so said, you told them I should wait. What? Oh, my God. Uh, reverse and traveler, right? Your phone, your iPad, turn them off. Turn off the sound if you want to know notifications. I've turned off the sound for my mail because, honestly, I get tons of mail. So there's no way to be eating all day. I turn off sounds for that. I turn off sounds for most of my IM apps, most of my other messages. Um, there's still some sounds that it makes, and I have no idea what those are. Someday I'll figure them out. Uh, I think they're fantasy football ones, who knows? But you can easily t control what's going on. You can even tell Traveler, if you want, not to sync automatically. You probably don't even know that. You've probably been thinking, wow, I get my mail like that. But you can also say, ah, just sync, you know, every hour or two or something like that. Like, So you can be flexible and make your life a little better, a little more efficient, a little more less noise all around you. Right? And for people like me, who, who generally don't get a lot of work done when we're in an office because there's people around, but when we're home, we do. The idea of having all these things beeping and trying to get our attention is not a good idea. So try and work on these the best you can. And again, if you've got any questions, please you know reach out and ask. There's also a phone option called Daywise. I don't use this, but a number of people recommended it to me when I was asking about this session. Uh, and the idea is basically you can set what you want to hear when. So it's kind of like, uh, for those who know the Pomodoro plan, you know, you can say, well, I'm going to work for a half hour at a time, turn it on for five minutes every half hour. You can do all kinds of things. I highly recommend if your phone is an issue for you, you look into it. Uh, I spend uh, once a week, actually, my phone gets shut off, <laughs> as does my laptop and everything else. And I do nothing with it for that 24 hours. And then miraculously, when I'm back online, you're all there, and the messengers are all there. Nothing really, well, usually, has happened that causes a big problem. You know, in, in 30 years, my God, 30 years of working, I think I've had maybe four emergencies over all that time where people couldn't reach me in that one day. Um, but I've got other people they can, and that's what's important. Always have a team, always have other ways for people to reach out and catch you, right? Even at home, if you're the only person home, you don't have family, you're just living by yourself, let people know you're home. You know, leave things on, ping people, do things, right? Be, but be more efficient and, and be responsive so that people know you're around and not just hiding or, you know, something like if you're sick or something, right? And that's what all this is about. How do we handle ourselves when we're not in the office and when we're not responsible to the office? So I see we're coming up to, uh, seven, eight minutes, so it's good. We're up just towards the end. So to review real fast, right? configure clients to leave you alone, which we just talked about. It's the most important thing. Stop get letting all the binging and dinging and punching and bopping. Have all that stuff stop, right? In fact, just turn the music from Spotify way up higher, and you won't have to worry about hearing your phone anymore. Uh, make your notes quite more efficient, right? We talked about that. Change some of the settings, change some of the application, the TCP IP, your home, home server um, information, your dominant directory server, all that kind of stuff makes your life more efficient. It makes your notebook much more efficient. There's no reason notes should take a minute or two to open. It should open pretty fast. Uh, secure your environment. Your admin should have been doing this all along. You should be doing it from your side. You know, your home, your kids are around. Use the Windows lock key if you've got a Windows machine. If you've got a Linux machine, your kids probably have no idea what to do with it anyway. If you have an Apple, just set the screen so that it goes off and requires a password. Do the simple things, make your life better. You don't want your kids accidentally typing and ruining your document you've been working on for six hours. Don't forget to have some fun, create the R and R room for everybody to interact, whether it's you know happy hour at six o'clock every day or if it's just you know catch up with the boss at lunch sometime. Give it to people. Let people have it. Let people have fun and enjoy themselves. Don't forget to upgrade and secure everything, whether it's the SSL or you know your, your clients, updating your Zoom, updating your same plan client, your notes client. Keep yourself up to date, including your hardware. Right? Silence is golden. Don't forget to turn the devices back on and check in at least twice a day. Your boss and everyone else is probably okay with the fact they didn't hear from you immediately, but after a couple of hours, they may start to wonder. So 
um, ideally, I recommend that you should check in first thing in the morning, you know, before you start work, just see what's going on, you know, lay of the land. At lunchtime, check in again, you know, try and catch up a bit. And then at the end of the, towards the end of the day, again, check in and see what's happening. And if you can limit yourself to three times a day, you'll see your life is much better. Get on much further. You'll be more efficient with everything else you're doing. Because otherwise, all you're going to be doing is going like like a fine line. You know, here, here's a thing, there's a thing, look, there's a thing. Everywhere's a thing, right? And we don't really want that. We want you to kind of come out of this in a happy, patient way so that when your boss says, we want you to come back to the office, you're either going to say, oh, no, I'm not going back to an office and I'll never get work done. Or if you're the other side, maybe salespeople, where you're like, oh, thank God, I can't wait to see people again, then, you know, go ahead. But at least your, your daily functionality, your daily um, efforts will be more efficient and more useful for you in the long run. And so I want to thank you for, for coming and, and listening. We've uh, got a few minutes here. I'm going to try to figure out if I can get into the QA in the chat. Don't see where the chat, oh, here's the chat. Okay, there's nothing in the chat. Uh, QA has nothing at the moment. Okay, so I don't have a way to open everybody's audio, or if I do, I don't see it. But if there's anything you have a question about, feel free to post it in the chat or the QA, and I will be happy to answer it. Uh, and my information, if you want, the, the slides, of course, are going to be posted by Richard Moy on, on the Collabster site. I think they're already on the pages. Uh, I can be reached at any one of these things. These are only the basic places to find me and see things. Um, my slides will be posted on SlideShare, as they always are. Uh, they'll be posted to my blog, probably posted to Twitter as well. Uh, I'm very <laughs> accessible. Uh, I know some people sometimes say they, they couldn't find me, and I always laugh because I'm like on 20 different systems, and there's really no, no reason not to be able to track this down. And that's the other thing about working from home is you, you want to make sure that, you know, all the things you use are, are accessible, not just to you, but to your friends, your family, your, your office mates, and they know how to find you. So um, I hope uh, this has been really good for everybody. I hope that everybody can uh, get what they're looking for out of out of the uh, system. I hope that you're enjoying the rest of the collabs here. Please go and, and check out what other people have got to say. And if you're uh, around tomorrow morning at the same time and want to understand what the hubbub is about going to O365, please stop in and listen to me and Hogney. We'd be very happy to see everybody there. So. Otherwise, I'm just, if no one's got any questions, I'll still be here just in case for a few minutes because I um, have a few minutes to till I can shut off. And other than that, uh, thank you for coming and I hope you have a great day.